crew of two people is required to operate a steam locomotive. The train driver is responsible for controlling the locomotive's starting, stopping, and speed. The fireman is responsible for maintaining the fire, regulating steam pressure and monitoring boiler and tender water levels. The story of class 25 NC number 3472 in action is told as narrative voices by the guys who drove and fired the locomotive. As you see on this side of the panel, on the fireman's panel, you get these five gauges. The one on top is for your coal pressure uh, that uh, the worm works from the coal tanner to the firebox. The one next to it is for the steam heating on your coaches on the passenger train. Coming down, this gauge is for your fine coal. That is uh, when you get a lot of dust coal, you set this fine coal as well and then it uh, doesn't throw the tube plate full of coal. Going down, you see the two front jets. That is to blow your uh, steam uh, according to your firebox where you need your coal. If you get small coal, you work it in a lower pressure. If you get heavy coal, you work it on a higher pressure. To open it, there we go. And then as soon as it opens, depends on your coal, and you, you uh, set your steam pressure accordingly. Your spray jet. It sprays the steam over your whole firebox. And it throws your coal where you would like your coal to, to fall, in the firebox. All right, as you can see there, that is your main steam gauge. That gives you the boiler pressure and uh, the red needle, uh, the red mark you see there, that is the maximum pressure that the boiler can take and uh, if the needle uh, arrives in the red, sp uh, red <coughs> stripe, the safety valves will blow off. And uh, if the safety valves doesn't blow off, you'll have to keep it below the red needle of the red mark and as soon as you come into the depot, you'll have to report it immediately. Then coming down, you can see your water gauge columns. There's two of them, one on each side of the main steam gauge. It shows you your amount of water in, the, in your boiler. And at the moment it's, it's full. And then you've got your steam cock and your water cock, and you've got your test cock at the bottom. That is to test before you leave the shed that your steam cock and your water cock is open, that your water can freely move up and down into the gauge column. As we come to the driver's side, this is your locomotive independent brake. This is your vacuum brake on your train, as well as on your locomotive. And this is your main steam pressure in your steam chest. As soon as you open the regulator, it, it uh, operates the, the team, steam pressure in this gauge here. And then you come to your reverser. This wheel system is a reverser. It's actually now in mid-gear. You work it forward gear and you work it back gear in uh, such a manner. Turn it to the forward gear or you turn it to the back gear. And at the moment, you turn it back to mid-gear because you have stabled the locomotive. And of course, this is your regulator that puts uh, the steam pressure into your uh, main steam che uh, chest going down to your cylinder and that makes the locomotive move. This is your brake system and uh, that is to uh, control your speed of the train accordingly on up and down hills.
the, the drifting rail. So we're going to take up the slack on the, on the buffer. And then uh, from there, open the regulator. And then I'm going to minor reverse into a cut off of 35%. Lower, you have to open the water valve and the steam valve to get your uh, injector working. To open the injector, you open your water valve first and then you open your steam valve. Seeing that this uh, locomotive's got a big firebox, it is uh, connected with an automatic stoker. And to start it, we open the coal for the Mechanical stoker to start working, and then we open our jet for the coal flow to go into the firebox and to be spread it all over so that the whole firebox gets filled up with fire. I started in 1962, when I was still in primary school. My dad was a uh, fireman at that time. And I always used to take his coffin to, to work, get on the steam engine, take a spade, and put the coal into the firebox. 
When I got home and I told my dad I got the job as a fireman, he phoned up the local and he said to the local, listen, I'm, uh, you put this guy with me and I'm going to be his training driver. And for the first six weeks, that was the time they gave us training with uh, a driver. My dad was my trainer. That six weeks was the worst hell in my life. But after that six weeks, I never ever looked back. And it was a, and it's still a pride to be a steam driver and a steam fireman as well. My passion for steam trains, in my way, you know the, the smell of the coal, the oil, the, 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 the steam, all that has got different kinds of smells. And it draws you, uh, your senses, the, the steam gas, the, the oil burning, the coal burning, the smoke out of the firebox. And that makes it the locomotive alive. This thing comes alive totally. And uh, it's humanly operated. It's not operated by itself. If you just look at your motion and the beat of the locomotive, where the, the beat goes out by the exhaust, by the chimney, that brings everything alive. Even the, 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 the rods on the wheels, coupled on the wheels. You can see where all that pressure is going to. It's giving off energy that can move massive loads. Most of the passengers, they enjoy, even if the sparks come out and their hair gets full of sparks, they still enjoy every moment of it. It gives you magic. A train driver is there to take a train from point A to point B in a safe manner, in a safe way. And as soon as the train departs, the train driver must know how to pull away with this load so that he doesn't jerk the people in the coaches. He's got a feeling on the locomotive because uh, every driver has got his own opinion of driving a locomotive. But there's quite a few uh, manners of driving a locomotive. But my point of view is, if you pull away with a locomotive, you open your drifter, you tighten up your train and then pull away. As soon as the whole train is in motion, you start opening your regulator at the full 75%. As soon as it starts speeding up, you work your uh, reverser back to where the cutoff point may be. Depends on the speed you're traveling. It can be uh, 65, 55, or 45, whatever the, the driver depends to work it on. And you work it according to your regulator. And on the downhills, you've got your brake system to control the speed of your train so that the maximum speed uh, can't be over travel. Ah, uh, no comment. <laughs> That's dirty for a bit of coke. <laughs>